Hello, this is Haka the Bean, and I am here with SCP-6666 Part 5, I want to say. Also, it's the number 11. Whew. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And if you don't, that's fair. Anyway, let's get into this. Addendum 6666-11 Expiration Log The following is a transcript of video and audio collected during an exploratory venture into the forest at the bottom of the cavern containing in this giant tree. Transit to the floor of the cavern was conducted by lowering a modified habitation and module the full to a 4 kilometer distance from the deck of Alpha Tower to the entry site, roughly 1.2 kilometers from the entrance to the forest. Exploratory team members were fitted with Class C polyshell or positively estrogen insertion suits with filtered respirators. Onboard air monitoring systems were fed to each suit, and reserved to ink of an emergency oxygen was available in the event that the system reported a dangerous level of the SCP-6666 neurotoxin. <sighs> Exploration video log transcript. Date, May 25th. 26, 2019. Support team. Global Task Force Hat at 1. Land of Longinus. Subject. SCP-6666. Team Lead. Commander Astral. Car Fire Team. Carrier, Horizon, Triple, Pressure, and Glass. Research Team. Dr. Bishop, Dr. Moore, Dr. Gutierrez, and Dr. Z. I'm not, not sure if I said that right. Anyway. Begin long, Ugh. Cobb's coming online. Control, do you read me? We read you, Commander. Your video is coming online now. Bluefish comes online. Commander Astral is is setting near the edge of the forest. Is next to Ukaria, Horizon Triple, Pressure, and Glass. Supervisor or Doctor Bishop and her team, doc, her teams, Doctors Moore, Gutierrez, and Z, is sent nearby. <sighs> Commander, we see you clearly. Signal is good. Can we get a signal test on nerve one? And else? Yep, let's run through it. Horizon, check. Glass, check. Carrier, check. Pressure, check. Triple, check. This is Bishop, check. Guterres, uh, check. Guterres! Yes, come again? Check control, this is Gutierrez. We read you over. Z, check, check. Copy, you all sound good. Confirm position. Roughly one click from the elevator. 200 meters or so from the tree line. Copy that, Commander. Can you confirm air quality? Glass. Reading at between a 2.3 and 6.1 ppm at our current location control. <sighs> Copy that glass, we're seeing the same thing. Team, be advised, we are unsure how accurately we will be able to track you in the forest. Our cameras have a hard time reading heat through the trees. If you need ballistic support, don't hesitate to pop flares or light up the foliage. Copy that control, don't need to give them any ideas. The boys look a little too keen with the flamethrowers. Disregard that control, we're all good here. Great to turn the light at the first sign of trouble. Understood, Commander. Try to keep a leash on them. Copy as well, Control. Okay, I think we're ready. Everyone unready? Alright, let's move. The team approaches the wall of the forest. Astral Justice towards the scout, the insertion point, and the team enters the forest. The interior of the forest is exceedingly dark, more so than the cavern interior itself due to the light from the outer. Observatory tower floodlights and sunlight that enters through the access shaft. While there is some clearing by which the team went, can maneuver, the majority of the space within the forest is covered in thick, dark foliage. So, what do you think we'll find in here, Miss Dr. Bishop? It's hard to say. There are really a thousand different things we could find that Dr. Malthus would consider valuable to our research. So much has gone pulled from down. Pulled down here, either by the wormwoods or the tree itself, really anything we can gather and translate would be beneficial. I 
I heard, heard someone else mention that before too. Wormwoods. What's a wormwood? It's a actually Z, you were on that team, weren't you? Yes, I was. It was a it was my summer before last. The wormwoods are well, it's a daybite weapon. First off, the daybites are another race of antediluvians, but different than the Sky Kings or the Zazatiri. They were blood magicians. At some point in their history, they learned that the Troll of the Night had a weapon that they could use to pull entire civilizations into the ground. The Deva wanted this for themselves. Think of it as the equivalent of a primordial atomic bomb. So they came across the, the Sea of E2Ds. Huh, probably was this forest, wasn't it? Was just thinking the same thing. Anyway, 100,000 and Deva die, but they managed to acquire these seeds. You plant one beneath the ground of your enemy and it grows in secret. It just places the earth beneath them until one day they are swallowed up and destroyed. They by further enchant them with their own sorcery. Once the place goes into the earth, people immediately forget that it ever existed. And the seeds came from the big tree. That's a belief, yeah. It doesn't produce much of anything now except roots, but it's fair to say that there are probably more of the seeds here somewhere. I wonder why they were so intent on dragging so much stuff down here. Well, 073 says Storm of Night were created to kill the first man. Maybe they just didn't know how to do anything else? That's pretty fricked. Typically, they through the forest for another two hours. Extranet's dialogue removed. Commander Astra, I be advice. We're having some trouble with your with our dear location currently, and our things coming from you are getting more sporadic. We think this is a technical issue, but until further advice, we do not have a consistent way to track your location. Copy that control. Let me know if you want us to stay put. You're clear to proceed, Commander. Just alert us if anything changes. Copy that. One hour of extraneous dialogue removed. It's so quiet in here. Yeah. Usually with the forest, you'd think there'd be bugs or birds or anything. There's nothing. Look alive, straight ahead. I see it. The team approaches a tree at the back. I would smell a clearing in front of them and pelt through the well, low hanging tree limb is a small emaciated emici humanoid or with long pointed ear tips and large eye sockets. What is that thing? It's a fairy, look! Dr. Bishop approaches the figure and wipes the socks, rescue off of its head with her hand. Another seems to around the torches. The hair on the figure's head is unmistakably silver. Bishop, look, they're in the back! Richard reaches towards the rear of the figure and where a small pouch has been in between in the ferry and the tree. She works the pouch loose and pulls it away, revealing a small cloud sack. She opens it up and pulls out a small bottle of sticks and leaves. What's that? I think it's... Oh, it's a doll! Oh. There's just... Yeah, there are just toys in here. Low carved stones and trinkets. Do we need to collect anything else? Guterres, get some pictures of this. We uh, don't need to stay here. We can keep going. Two pieces in, in your zone. One hour of extraneous dialogue removed. Let's see about getting a location check, Control. Do you read me? We copy, Commander. Can you give me a location check? We should be under. We should even need eat the Alpha uh, Tower by my estimate. Copy that. One moment. Commander, I try to advise that we are still experiencing technical issues. Currently, Ian do not have a location ping on any member of your party. That's not great. Copy that control. We're going to stay up here for now until you can get that sorted out. Copy. We'll keep you posted. Roll out the HAB and between those two trees, pressure. Triple, let's get the yeah, no. ISIS out to scrub the suits. We'll set up shop here for a bit and see if we can write out the issues. Exploration team begins setting up the camp using the inflatable positive pressure habitation tent and air ionizers. Extra is dialogue removed. After several hours away, the team sets up of watch trips and begins to sleep. Time passes. Extra is dialogue removed. It's about 3.51 a.m. in local time. Horizon has a watch. Dr. Moore awakens abruptly with a scream. What is it? What's wrong? I... 
I... I saw... What's going on? I'm sorry, I... I had a dream just now. I swear, I swear it was real. It was just like sitting here right now, only... What did you see, Alistair? I say, there was a path into the woods and I was walking down on it and I saw... I saw the fairy we found on a tree. And then another we missed in a ditch near it. And I could see through the dark just like it was daylight. But everything was this horrible red. And then I passed here and saw the hab. And then kept walking until I came to this. I don't know. This can end up being in the middle of it. And in the middle of it was a hole. And this was voice saying. The devil was almost 20 miles down. But what's deeper? I looked over the edge of the hole. And then I was falling. And then. I swear to you, Bishop, it was no different than sitting with you here now. I can't explain it. It's alright. You're alright. I wasn't sleeping easy either. Control, this is a try. Do you read me? We are Commander. Go ahead. We're experiencing some of the psychological effects detailed in Dr. Arnold's report. Can you confirm any precautionary measures we need to be taking? Contact. Uh, Commander, one moment while we confer. Commander, I'm sorry, I'm fine. You don't need to worry about it. It's alright, Dr. Moore. We don't want to take any chances. Commander Astral, we have reason to believe that any of the relevant psychological issues will become more prevalent the closer you get to the center of the forest. Did we know about this ahead of time? I'm curious why I wasn't prepped on this earlier control. We cannot confirm this at this time, Commander. Copy that control. If there's anything else I need to know, I'd like to hear about it sooner, please. Copy that, Commander. Let's back up. I don't want to waste any time out here than we need to. Explorer 18 collapses the head model and leaves the campsite I towards the southwest. Two hours of extraneous dialogue removed. As the team continues through the forest, it's triple signals to, to stop. Commander, look at this. Dr. Bishop, what do you think this is? Are those stairs? Triple will just wait toward or to lodge nearby tree, where a staircase is clearly visible emerging from this trunk and spiraling upwards. They are. Am I imagining this, or do they also look like they grew out of the freaking thick of this thing? Commander! Dr. Bishop! Up there! Glass points up, and the rescue team adjusts their spotlight skyward, and it cannot, and the, it cannot up be of the forest as high above but then strange twisting structures are visible, appearing to have formed from the wooden limbs of the, of the trees. The shape of the structures is incongruous with the forest itself, as if they were to they were a smell of the ruined buildings outside the forest manifested in the treetops. As it's in, in continues to scan them, doctors I just swear once to be silent. Shh listen. Silence. I hear it. What is this? Is it wind? There's no wind. It has to be something else. Where's it coming from? Over there. Follow me. The thing proceeds through the forest, which becomes increasingly dense with buildings and strange curving pathways to the trees that do not seem to have any logical ending. The sound of moving air becomes more and more apparent. Control, this is A-Stray. Can we get a position check, please? Silence. Control, do you read me? Silence. Glass, do we have a comms link? What's going on here? There, over there! Look, a clearing! There's something in the clear- in the center of it. Come on, Glass, please, if you can. I'm working on it, Commander. Hang tight. The team follows Dr. Gutierrez's its direction towards a gap in the dense of the trees. After a moment, they pass the gap into a wide clearing. This is it. Oh my god. What the heck is this? The team exits into the clearing, which is a perfect, a nearly perfect circle of open space covered in low, thick grass. Arching overhead are trees, much larger than the surrounding forest. Poor old in towards each, they try to create a massive dome in the forest. Hanging from the arch trees overhead are thousands of humanoid corpses. Some clearly human, and others resembling the figure the team had earlier found and paddled on a tree limb. These figures are all shackled in some way to thick black chains that have been latched to the top of the dome. The ground level of the clearing slopes downward, and at the bottom of the slope, roughly 110 meters in front of the team, is a large featureless stone slab, measuring approximately 30 meters by 50 meters, 
and two meters thick. This is... This is a clearing for my dream, but there was a hole here. Not that. Well, I would like to look at this at all. Sign up team. Bishop, is this what you were looking for? I believe so, yes. You think this is Osman's awesome psych hole? Yes, the answer is as we're looking for right down here. That's great and all, but I have no clue how you intend to get underneath that thing. It's got to weigh a, a 6,000 tons. We don't need to. Look over there. There's an opening. Glass motions to a section of slab near the, our corner, where a sizable chunk of the slab is broken. The broken piece was, of the sun lies embedded at half, a half meter in the grass nearby. <sighs> Let's go. The team approaches the broken section of slab. Asher approaches the, the opening and looks down. Pretty deep. Horizon. Henry Flair. Rise pulls out a flare from the pack, agonizes to Astro, who lights it and drops it into the opening. It falls roughly 12 meters and lands on the sun below. Huh, not that deep at all. Let's get a ladder set up here and brace on this rock. Inspect the, the broken stone. I mean, this piece alone has got to weigh 2 or 3 tons, right? How did this get over here? That windy sound. Do you hear it? It's coming from down there. Yep, I hear it. Like, wish if you're gonna have about 30 minutes down here before I pull all this out. You understand? We're down in comms. We have at least six hours of hacking to get back to the elevator. And I don't want to stick around away for whatever opened this hole. Or for us. I understand. That's fine. Alright, carrier, glass, you come with me. Horizon, pressure, triple, you stay here and monitor the area. Alistair, uh, Pavlo, stay here with the field team. See what you can gather from this clearing. Yes, ma'am. And I have been uh, and, and messing with the voice. Yes, of course. G, with, G you're with me. Understood. Israel Carrier, Glass, and Doctors Bishop and G descend in the lighter into space beneath the sound slab. The sound of moving air becomes more audible in the cavern below. Let's get the floodlights on in here. It's somehow darker or here or than it is up there. All five members of the cavern group turn on their flood lamps, fully illuminating the area around them. And the walls of the chamber are smooth gray stone, and the chamber itself is roughly five meters on each side. So as you get vertically to the sun slab above, along the also recess openings in the rock. A community of which are empty, but um, that contain one boxes found in chains. And because the walls are thick male hooks and more chains hang from the ceilings. There is a single door on the north wall. Alright, this is it. Let's go. The team goes through the doorway, which exits into a long hallway. The hallway contains more recess openings, some of which contain wooden boxes, but others that contain various humanoid and animal bones. Some of the openings have been sealed using a kind of thick crystalline and wax. Carry your gestures above a wood opening where a mural was present, carved into the rock. The mural depicts many hundreds of dark like figures that ending beneath the large tree with a red artifact in its center. As they continue forward, they pass sealed passageways overgrown with roots and more. Our mural is depicting various scenes of humanoid figures being bound in trains, dropped outside the pits full of bodies or set on fire. Present nearly every mid arrow is a picture of the same tree and red artifact. The hallway it winds around to the west. As an extra emotion to move around the bend. As the hallway strains back out, the team sees a large stone on its head with another mural across its entire surface. The mural depicts a mass of dark figures with large yellow eyes huddled around the base of a large, curled, vaguely feminine figure with many arms wrapped around them, as dark clouds gather overhead. Ashray approaches the doorway and pulls it back. The door easily swings open, turning back to look at the rest of the team momentarily. Asher nods and enters the doorway. They exit into a circular room containing two staircases. One ascending on the left and one descending on the right. The ascending staircase is blocked off completely with stone and rubble filling the stairwell as if having fallen from somewhere. Glass immediately motions to his air monitor which shows elevated levels of toxic park plate in the chamber. Dr. Bishop approaches the ascending staircase and gestures for the team to follow her down. They descend roughly 20 meters before reaching a landing and then and turning back to the center another 20 meters. At the bottom of the staircase is a wide arch opening as Dr. Bishop passes under the arch. She stops suddenly and holds up her hand. Asher comes alongside her. In front of them is an enormous chamber stretching out as far as the eye can see in every direction. 
though the ceiling is low, in a circle around the archway, and in a set and concentric circles around that are large, unmoving humanoid figures covered entirely in slick dark hair, sitting on a stone floor and curled into the fetal position. They each are covered in the toxic dust that had previously emanated out of it, out of this, out of the big tree. Blast reaches up and touches his ear, and the others nod, and it's a source of sound of moving air. I see a normal number of curled figures breathe slowly in unison. Up above and in the dome clearing, Dr. Gutierrez and Dr. Moore inspect the exterior of the slab while horizon pressure and triple scan the tree line. Suddenly, there is a sound of something moving in the trees, causing pressure to look towards the eastern edge of the clearing. What was that? There's something in the tree. There's something in the trees. Listen. What is it? Shh. Listen. Silence. Suddenly, all five members of the team in the clearing hear an unusual sound. It's laughter, as if from a child but stretch unnaturally and echoing as if from far away. Both Moore and Gutierre is come away from the edge of the slab to where it's pressure and horizon, as Triple advances on a spot at the edge of the clearing. The sound is heard again, although behind them, on the western side, all five team members turn to face the western edge of the clearing as the sound is heard again. And above them. There, in the tree! There's something moving in the trees! There! The team turns to look, and as they do, they catch a glimpse of a large fleeing object moving quickly through the dark tree line, and before it disappears again. Once more, they hear the sound of this strange laughter, which stops suddenly. Where'd it go? Suddenly, another sound is heard. Different at first. A high-pitched whine, crackling and unnaturally tonal, seemingly coming from somewhere above them. The sound continues for another 15 seconds, and then stops suddenly. What the heck was that? Sliding to the ground, I mean, the shakes and the sound of a geological well, movement can be heard across the entire chamber. The arch trees overhead begin to wrestle, and then with the, with the sound of yawning wood, we get to pull back from each other, revealing an inky blackness overhead. And the far distance of the dim light of the powerful observation tower flood lamps can be seen through the dark. As the trees fall away and straighten, the radio crackles. Commander Ace Trey, do you read us? Hit one team. Do any of you read? This is pressure. Go ahead. Where's Ace Trey? She went and below with Bishop and half the team. There's some kind of opening in the earth down here. Pressure, be advised. There's another entity at your position we cannot identify. Control, we... The high-fetched writing sound cuts him off and the cavern shakes again for six seconds before suddenly. What the heck is going... Suddenly the entire chamber is faded in vibrant red light. The team looks sky... Anyway, we're high above... It. Of overhead, the a tr a corpse of a Titania has eliminated with red light emanating from the base of the entity. The team hears laughter again. At the same time, in the chamber below, the team braces as the rumbling stops. As the earth settles, Atre looks at the others. Everyone good? I'm fine, thanks. Yeah, I'm good. Good, I think it's time to... It's time to. Well, I think the time to leave is now. Yes, let's. What happened to well, the wind? You're right, that's. Ashra is as cut off as Archbishop Gas. She sank back into the chamber beyond the, the archway where all the humanoid figures are now staring at the doorway, their eyes open and glowing yellow. There's a loud, out snapping sound, and one of the figures in the fifth row so, oh, back moves suddenly, lifting its left arm, followed by another sound as it lifts its right. It bends as if to stand, and suddenly the entire chamber is full of the sound of movement. Run! Turn to face the others. Run! The team flees back up the stairway, catching themselves as the earth shakes again. They retreat back down the hallway, towards the road that east of the chamber with the ladder. Commander A straight, do you read me? Where are you? We're coming, Horizon. Get your people out of there. We have to go. Commander, we need to hurry. I hear you, Horizon. Come on, run! The entire team reaches the side chamber and begins to hurry up the ladder. A sound of rushing air can be heard from behind them, and suddenly the air is thick with toxic dust that blows past them and out of the opening in the slab. The team holds onto the ladder and recess opening into the rock, but Dr. Z, who had been at the top ladder, is blown five meters into the air and hard on the stone slab. As he lands the plexiglass fast, ace mask of the helmet cracks and 
sleep reach alarm sound. As the instructions to begin stopping oxygen and attempt to maintain positive pressure. Come on, go, go, Horizon, help him, we have to go. From deep below, heavy footsteps can be heard. The remainder of the team exits from below the slab, while Horizon and Carrie grabs G, who looks around at them panicked. Hang on, hang on, I feel these body seizes and then goes completely limp. Ciao! No! God gosh darn it! Gosh darn it! We have to leave him, Bishop. He's already gone. No! No, we can't! He can still- Bishop, listen to me. We have to go. I'm sorry. We have to go. Uh, oh god. Come on. Come on. The team heads back into the forest, following the same path they had taken and coming in. More shattering left can be heard around them. Control, this is is ice train. I need a freaking geolocation ping right freaking now. I need to know the fastest way out of here. Call that commander, one moment. Right freaking now, control, please. We see you, commander. Your shortest path is roughly a 14 clicks to the northeast from your position. Alright, come on. We have to uh, 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 a spot. Carrier, horizon, give us some cover. Copy that. Here in the horizon turn to open their flamethrowers on the trees around them. As the forest begins to burn, the sound of crackling chamber is overheard as many of the supports holding up the massive structures built on the trees themselves begin to grow and, and fail. As two men turn and follow the rest of the, of the group, horizon is pulled backwards suddenly. Carrier stops and turns back. Commander! No, it's later, Carrier hears horizon screaming before quick, being quickly cut it off. There is a wet, tearing sound, followed by a dark, wet mass flying towards his carrier. He ducks out of the way and turns to see the upper torso of Horizon, separated from it, its bottom half as if, tarred, as if pulled in two. Horizon's eyes blink rapidly as it mouths inaudible words. Carrier shouts again before pulling a side arm and shooting Horizon twice with her mask. Blood fails Horizon's helmet and he stops moving. Carrier! Commander, whatever is out here, God Horizon, I had to. Gosh darn it. Curry, come on, let's go quickly. Harry looks down at Horizon and again before running off after the rest of the team. The remaining members of the Hat 1 team, along with the Doctors Bushem, Katoris, and more, continue running without additional disturbance, pausing only briefly on four separate occasions to cut their uh, trip red. After one hour and 34 minutes, the team emerges and, from tree line out up to the field of of giving our remains previously mapped by Hero. The team turns north for 2 kilometers, making it back to the elevator after roughly 1 hour and 46 minutes. Due to the events detailed in the next uh, uh, addendum, none of the members of HEP1 or the research team realized that Dr. Z's audio and radio transmitted about damage began transmitting 1 hour after their departure. Z coughs, violently rolls onto his back. Above him, even the tree is now is visible, now glowing with bright red light. Z takes several deep breaths and looks around him. He stands, shaking, and raises himself against the slab. In the action rushing into a crack in his helmet, he puts a glove up over it. From somewhere nearby, Z hears the same stretched laughter as was heard previously by the other members of the exploratory team. He begins walking slowly away from the slab towards his tree line. He steps into the trees and stumbles forward as, as his breathing gets increasingly heavy. He takes several more steps before stopping. The sound of laughter is picked up on his mat on his microphone as he turns back towards the clearing. As he turns, and his video and audio equipment begins to act erratically, as if it is unknown if this behavior is a, is a result of a technical malfunction or changes to the space immediately around on the Z. Despite this, the camera captures several distorted frames of a figure roughly. He's six meters tall, standing in a gap between two trees, illuminated from behind by the red light coming from um, the tree. After two seconds, Z's camera stops functioning entirely and shuts off. Z is heard walking quickly towards the forest, his breathing more and more labored. There's another laugh from immediately behind him, and then a powerful, low running sound fills the chamber. The source of the sound is above him, coming from, S from the large tree. More laughter is heard as Z begins to run, and another loud drone is heard. A third drone is, is heard followed by a loud screen, and then Z's recording equipment shuts down entirely. Z's transmitter continues pinging his location for an additional 16 minutes. He is dragged backwards 100 meters for coming to rest. After this, communication with the transmitter is terminated due to have the atmospheric interference. 
The final 38 seconds of Z's audio transmission are available below. I suppose we can listen. Actually, listening to that is probably a bad idea. That was a number 11. And that is it for today's video. So, they tried to do their... Exploration mission which ultimately ended up failing. They did learn a lot, but they lost at least two members of their team. One of which having been, it appears, torn apart by previously unknown SCP-1000 entities that were in the forest, or Children of the Night. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And if you did not enjoy this video, then you wasted 31 minutes on something that you didn't enjoy. At that point, it's on you. Goodbye.